Pleasant evening and a warm welcome to the national news live on Channel I. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. And I'm Dishan Virakon and here are your headlines for tonight. The number of COVID-19 infected patients in the country rises to 477. 120 patients fully recovered. All leave of the Triforces cancelled. The Army Commander issues a notice for all Triforce personnel who are on leave to report to their respective camps immediately. The global COVID-19 death toll surpasses 200,000. The USA records 2,065 deaths within the past 24 hours. For those and other stories in detail on your top story. An all-night period chanting to invoke merits on the country and its people took place at the historic Katharagam sacred site yesterday. President Gota Berajapaksa also participated. Upon arriving at the Katharagama sacred site, the president called on the chief incumbent of the Kirivehera Rajamahaviharaya, Chief Sanganayaka of the Ruhunumagam Pattua Venerable Kobavaka Dammi in the Thera, and obtained blessings. The Thera commended the measures taken by the president to control the coronavirus and donated 1 million rupees to the COVID-19 Health and Social Security Fund. A souvenir was also presented to the president to mark his visit. The president, after engaging in special religious rites and obtaining blessings at the Kirivehera Stupa, also worshipped at the Ashtapala Bow Tree at the premises of the sacred site. President Rajapaksa, upon arriving at the Kataragama Sri Abhinavarameya, met the chief incumbent, Chief Adhikarna Sangha Naika of Magam Pattua, Kapugama Saranati Satera. Thereafter, the president visited the Kataragama Mahadevale and the other Devales and engaged in religious rituals. The president also attended the all-night period chanting at the historic Rulu Maha Kataragama Devale. The global death toll from the COVID-19 exceeds 200,000 with confirmed cases approaching 3 million across the world, while several worst hit countries in Europe saw their coronavirus death rates lowering. Meanwhile, China announced that all of the coronavirus patients in the city of Wuhan, the original epicenter of the virus's outbreak, have been discharged. The coronavirus COVID-19 has affected 210 countries and territories around the world thus far. 2,936,386 cases have been reported in the world at present and the global death toll has escalated to 203,703. The number of COVID-19 cases in the United States, which has registered the most infectious and the highest death toll, has increased to 960,896 as of today. According to the tally, a total of 54,265 deaths related to the disease have been recorded in the country. Spanish health authorities confirmed that 22,902 people in the country had lost their lives due to the coronavirus after reporting 378 deaths yesterday. Meanwhile, 2,915 new cases were also confirmed by PCR tests, raising the total number of confirmed infections by such tests to 205,905, while bringing the total number of cases in the country to 223,759. The number of cured patients has risen by 3,353 to 95,708. In another sign of encouragement, Italy reported 415 new deaths related to the COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, the smallest daily increase raising the nationwide fatalities to 26,384 since the pandemic broke out in the northern Italy earlier this year. Total active infections stood at 105,847, down by 680 cases compared to the previous day, the sixth consecutive daily drop in the number of active infections in Italy. The total recoveries in the country has increased to 63,120. The total number of confirmed cases has risen to 195,351. 
The lockdown, which is expected to last until May 3rd, will be followed by a gradual resumption of social, economic and productive activities in the country, according to the Italian government. The total number of coronavirus-related deaths in Britain has escalated to 20,319. 148,377 cases of COVID-19 had been confirmed, marking a daily increase of 4,913. British health authorities announced that clinical trial had been given approval to determine if plasma donated by patients who have recovered from COVID-19 can help those battling the illness. Russia has reported 5,966 COVID-19 cases over the last 24 hours, raising the total number to 74,588. The death toll climbed to 681, while 6,250 people have recovered, including 682 in the past 24 hours. Moscow, the country's worst hit area, confirmed 2,612 new cases over the last 24 hours, taking its total to 39,509. Turkey has reported 2,861 new COVID cases, bringing the total number in the country to 107,773. Meanwhile, the deaths from the coronavirus have reached 2,706. In addition, 25,582 patients have recovered from the viral respiratory disease. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Japan had reached 13,231, with, with daily increase of 368. Also, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to citizens to strictly comply with the nationwide local lockdown rather, and maintain social distancing norms, as cases of coronavirus mounted steadily despite over a month-long curfew. India has reported 26,496 cases of COVID-19, the respiratory disease caused by the coronavirus, and 824 deaths. India allowed a limited opening of shops in neighborhoods and pres residential areas a month after the country of some 1.3 billion people went in lockdown. Now in more stories, the government in a release issued this evening states in order to facilitate the recalling of all Triforce personnel who are currently on leave, curfew will be imposed island-wide on the 27th of April, which is tomorrow. President's media division states, except in the districts of Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara and Puttalam, curfew imposed in the other districts will be lifted at 5 a.m. on Tuesday, the 28th of April and will be reimposed at 8 p.m. on the same day. DIG Ajit Rohan says that curfew regulations will continue to be in force. However, essential services will be facilitated, but no movements in the high-risk areas and these four districts will be permitted without a curfew pass. The DIG further stated that with exceptions for special reasons, movements between districts will be not allowed and these regulations are relevant for the entire country. In order to control the spread of the coronavirus, wandering on the roadways unnecessarily and gathering in crowds at various locations is discouraged. Passenger transportation in trains and CTB buses is facilitating only for those who are heading for work. Except for those who necessarily need to report to work, all others should remain at home. Stepping out of one's residence should only be for purchasing essential commodities such as food and pharmaceuticals. For this purpose, a trade stall in close proximity, which can be reached on foot, should be chosen. Movements between districts have been restricted to essential services and travelling for work-related purpose. Schools, universities, tuition classes and other educational institutes and cinema halls should remain closed until further notice. Should a particular area or village in district where the curfew has been relaxed is identified as a risk-prone area, curfew will be imposed throughout the day enforcing restrictions in such an area. Should an area be declared as a quarantined area, entry into and out exist from the particular area will be completely prohibited. All types of celebrations, pilgrimages and trips, fairs, meetings and parades have been banned until further notice. As events in which crowds gather are an obstacle in controlling the spread of the virus, it has been notified to suspend religious celebrations as well. DIJ has thrown a say that parties, trips, gatherings in crowds, sporting events and religious ceremonies should not take place. The DIJ states that if such events are organized, the law will be enforced against those responsible and steps will be taken to arrest them and produce them before courts and have them remanded. Rakshita Bandana Gara Gatakiri Matakati Tukarno. 
Steps have been taken to further the measures taken to supply essential goods and services without interruptions. The epidemic needs to be fully controlled in order to safeguard the public from the virus and ensure their health, security and prosperity. The restoration of the stalled economic activities needs to be necessarily happen in parallel. These objectives can be fulfilled only if public cooperation is received in controlling the virus. The government says at this moment the public can render their maximum support by understanding how serious this epidemic is and, standing, and staying at home whilst paying 100% adherence to recommended health guidelines. The government emphasizes that the public should responsibly bear with all difficulties for the well-being and the security of themselves, their offspring and the nation. A release issued by the President's media division states that maximum penalties will be imposed under the existing laws against persons found mis uh, misbehaving in a manner that obstructs the well-being of society. <laughs> Now, patrols are underway to arrest curfew violators island wide. At the close of the 24 hour period ending 6 a.m. today, 1,211 curfew violators have been arrested, whilst 348 vehicles have been seized. Around 39,000 curfew violators have been arrested since the day curfew was first imposed and around 10,000 vehicles have been seized by the police. DIG Ajit Rohan observes that these days Various postings are circulating online, especially inciting religious hatred. The DIG warns that if any individual resorts to incite discord and hatred amongst ethnicities or religious groups, it results in an offence under the International Convention for the Protection of Civil and Political Rights Act, for which a seven-year prison sentence can be imposed. The a DIG further stated the CID has begun investigations into nine such postings, which have been circulating online. He calls on the public to in no way post or share such content as any individual can end up being found guilty of offence. Now, the World Health Organization said on Saturday that there was currently no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and have antibodies are protected from a second coronavirus infection. The World Health Organization said on Saturday that there was currently no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and have antibodies are protected from a second coronavirus infection. Uh, In a scientific brief, the agency warned governments against issuing immunity passports or risk-free certificates to people who have been infected, as their immunity is not guaranteed. The practice could actually increase the risks of spreading coronavirus as people who have recovered may ignore advice on taking precautions. Chile said last week it would begin handing out health passports to people who had developed antibodies to the virus. They could immediately rejoin the workforce. The WHO said it continued to review the evidence on antibody responses to COVID-19. Most studies have shown those who have recovered do have antibodies to the virus, but others have shown very low levels of neutralizing antibodies in their blood, which suggests an immune response that does not involve antibodies may be critical for recovery. Some 2.8 million people have been reported to be infected with coronavirus globally, and more than 195,000 have died from it, according to a Reuters tally. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will be back at work tomorrow. A Down the Street spokeswoman confirmed yesterday after recovering from a case of coronavirus. Okay, thanks, finish, yes, thank you. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson will return to work Monday. A spokeswoman for his Downing Street office said on Saturday, Johnson has been recovering from coronavirus at home after spending three nights in intensive care in early April. This news comes the same day that Britain surpassed the grim milestone of 20,000 total deaths related to the coronavirus. Interior Minister Priti Patel. Our instruction remains clear. People should stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. 
it is imperative that people continue to follow the rules designed to protect their families, their friends and their loved ones. This will continue to save lives. The message remains stern to Britain's residents, to stay at home as the country continues to battle the outbreak. Now, millions of children in Spain under the age of 14 are enjoying their first taste of freedom in 42 days as the country relaxes their confinement rules and adults are likely to follow from May the 2nd. The new lockdown conditions allow Spain's 6.3 million under 14s to leave their homes each day for a total of one hour between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. without moving further than a kilometer. This is the first taste of freedom for Oliver, Hugo and Abel Sanchez after six weeks of lockdown in Madrid. Spain's kids can finally leave their homes for the first time on Sunday since the state of emergency was declared on March the 14th. We appreciate being able to go out because staying at home, it was getting very boring. Even though we have the PlayStation and we can talk to our friends on WhatsApp and video calls, it is good to be able to go out and have some fresh air because we were feeling a bit overwhelmed at home. Children under the age of 14 are now being allowed one hour of supervised outdoor activity per day between 9am and 9pm, staying up to half a mile from their homes. Adults can accompany up to three children who will not be allowed to use play parks and must adhere to social distancing guidelines, still remaining at least six feet from other people. Authorities urge parents be responsible and follow guidelines. Top police officials also cautioned that children must stick to the rules. Spain on Sunday recorded the lowest number of coronavirus deaths in over a month with 288 deaths in the previous 24 hours. Quadriplegic former professional rugby player Ed Jackson has scaled the height of Mount Everest by holding himself up and down the stairs of his parents' house and raised more than 50,647 US dollars for charity. <laughs> A quadriplegic former professional rugby player has scaled the height of Mount Everest on his parents' stairs. Ed Jackson has managed to raise more than $50,500 for Britain's National Health Service. It took the 31-year-old, who suffered a spinal cord injury three years ago, four days to climb 5,566 flights of stairs, with nearly 90,000 steps on one working leg. He hauled himself up and down for 12 hours a day to get to the 29,029 foot target. I've loved, I've loved it all. It's been painful, it's been monotonous, it's been boring at times, but most of the time, to be honest with you, it's been a lot of fun with all the people that got involved and just seeing that fundraising total go way past where we ever sort of dreamed of um, has been pretty inspiring. And, and I'm glad that whenever this lockdown ends, I know that I've sort of, done something positive, you know, um, and, and created some sort of positive out of this um, negative situation. The former England youth international broke his neck diving into a swimming pool in 2017. He says he kept in the spirit of the climb by camping out in his parents' living room in Bath. Now, legal experts state that so far all activities pertaining to the general election have been done according to the Constitution and the Election Act. They point out that although the election has been postponed due to the coronavirus, the submitted nominations remain valid. President's Council Jatisa de Costa says the president is the only person who can convene parliament and if the president does not have any necessity to convene parliament, no one can force a reconvening. He explains the handing in nominations is, is complete and once the nomination is closes, is complete, a part of the election process has been covered and now what remains is holding the election. The President's Council states that the election can be postponed for several reasons. However, the nominations handed in are 100% valid until the election is conducted.
Meanwhile, President's Council Manohar Astri says there is a law in the country with regard to contagious diseases and there is also a law with regard to quarantine and the prevention of the spread of diseases. He points out that the Quarantine Act was passed into law in the year 1897. The President's Council notes that this particular law is significant as it has provisions for the Health Minister to enact regulations for quarantine and preventative measures. President's Council Manohar Astri says the Health Minister is empowered to take any action in the event of a disease situation in order to control the disease. vested with the health minister to decide on whether the body of a deceased infected person should be buried or cremated and on the regulations pertaining to how it should be done. The President's Council for the states, if there are shortcomings in the disease prevention measures, the Health Minister is empowered to issue a gazette notification to rectify such lapses. He added thereby there is no basis in the argument that the lapses in the country cannot be addressed without a functioning parliament. In addition, the President's Council states that after parliament is dissolved, the President is fully vested with powers to allocate monies from the con consolidated fund for government expenditure during the dissolution period. He for the states, even if an election is held and a new parliament is convened someday, the president will not lose his powers. He points out that an additional three months is given for a new parliament to pass a budget. The president's council further stated that if the election gets postponed supposedly by a year, as per clause number 150, article 3, the president from that day onwards gets another three months to make allocations. A special program themed on building a country where the preserved national identity was aired on all TV and radio channels this morning. It was organized by Sri Lanka Broadcasting Fo Broadcasters Forum rather, and the Ministry of Information and Mass Media. The program was produced by the National Television and was named Deshya Desha Godanagim Sandaha Venamadya Mehayama. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, H. A. Karnaratna, says that through the banking sector, efforts are being taken to retain within the sector of the individuals and businesses that have been affected by the current situation, as there is a large group of affected persons, and the question is how to detain them within this economy until the economy of the country returns to normalcy. He pointed out that in the banking sector, this is the responsibility of the Central Bank, and a list of concessions for a period of two to six months has been arranged. He explained during the six-month period, cash payments or interest payments will not be necessary. Dr. W. M. W. Virakon said that large concessions have been granted for those involved in agriculture which include free supply of seeds as the objective is to encourage farmers in their agricultural activities. Dr. Virakon further stated that in the event of crop damages, compensations will be granted by the insurance. He also pointed out that the certified price has also been determined for all crops. Professor Rangika Halwatura said that before manufacturing anything new, it needs to be understood as to where what went wrong. He says remanufacturing other new inventions will not help in going forward. Dr. Ravi Lianagay pointed out that at this moment the country and its economy has come to a standstill. However, the opportunity has arisen for items to be manufactured within the country that can substitute imported goods. Dr. Lianagay further stated that when perceiving a different angle under the situation, a good opportunity has opened up to build a national economy in the country. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 infected patients in the country has risen to 477. The number of fully recovered patients is 120, whilst 350 patients are undergoing further treatment at hospitals. Meanwhile, steps have been taken to cancel all leave of Triforce personnel across all ranks. 
amongst the 11 newly confirmed cases reported today. One person was de detected from the Kandakadu quarantine centre, while the other 10 confirmed cases were reported amongst Navy personnel attached to the Vaisara Navy camp who were on leave and had headed home. A COVID-19 infected patient who was undergoing treatment at the Valikanda Base Hospital today arrived at his residence in the Balapiti area after recovering fully. He had arrived in the country from Italy and had tested positive whilst in quarantine at Kandakaru. Out of the 40 confirmed cases detected yesterday, 20 persons were from amongst the Navy personnel attached to the Valsara Navy camp. Investigations have revealed that 10 personnel attached to the camp and 10 personnel who were on leave had contracted the virus. Meanwhile, two family members of Navy personnel who were on leave have also reported, reportedly contracted the coronavirus. It has been confirmed that two individuals who had been directed to the Kandakaru quarantine center from Sir Bandar Naikama of the Colombo and three individuals who had been directed to the Katukeliyawa quarantine center from Puttalam have contracted the virus. In addition, three individuals who were sent to the Atalawa quarantine center after being stranded at the Oman airport and been flown back and one individual who have arrived from Maldives have also tested positive for the virus. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva said so far 95 confirmed COVID-19 cases have been detected in the Navy, which includes 68 Navy personnel within the Navy camps and 27 personnel who had been on leave and were out of the camp. The Army Commander said PCR testing was done on a large number of Navy personnel today and the reports are expected this evening or tomorrow. In addition, their family members have been sent to quarantine centers or advised to undergo self-quarantine. Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva further stated, steps have already been taken to detect those who interacted with these personnel and to quarantine them. One out of the five Navy personnel who were quarantined from the Hambantota MOH division tested positive for the virus in the PCR testing that was carried out yesterday. Currently, the family members of, of this naval officer have been self-quarantined and investigations are underway to detect those who had interactions with him. With the detection of a COVID-19 infected naval officer from the Pumadir village in Lankapura, Polo Narwa, 12 villages in the area were placed in isolation. A naval officer attached to the Valisara Navy camp who had been on leave and had headed for his home in Bulan Kulama, Pahalagama area of, Anur of Anuradhapura has also tested positive. Since he had moved around many areas in the village, the family members of eight residences have been quarantined whilst the village has been placed in isolation. In addition, another naval officer who went on leave together with the corona-infected naval officer attached to the Velisara Navy camp from the Palonalu area has also been advised to undergo self-quarantine at his residence at Rajanganaya. He and his family members were taken to the Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital for PCR testing today. Biosamples for PCR testing were obtained yesterday from the naval, naval officer who went on leave from the Velisara Navy camp and was quarantined in the Balapitiya area. The reports were received today and it was confirmed that he had not contracted the virus. Three individuals of the Hatton Ruanpura area who had close interactions with the naval personnel serving at the Valisara Navy camp have been directed to undergo self-quarantine. These three individuals are the parents and a one-and-a-half-year-old child of the same family. The child had developed a sudden fever and as the parents alerted the PHI of the area, they were instructed to undergo a 14-day self-quarantine period whilst the child has been PCR tested. Steps have also been taken to subject a naval officer and his family to self-quarantine in the Vaunia Mahakachya Kodi area, as his Navy officer had obtained leave a few days ago from the Valisara camp. An investigation has commenced to detect the groups that had direct interactions with this individual. 
with the detection of a COVID-19 infected patient in the Yahalavatta area at Avisa Well. 32 individuals belonging to eight families were instructed to undergo self-quarantine yesterday. The places where the corona infected naval officer from the Payagala Kakirave area visited in the Dambulla and Galeval locations were disinfected today. The individuals who had direct interactions with this naval officer has been sent for quarantine. All leave of the tri forces have been cancelled. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva says that a notice has been issued for all tri forces personnel who are on leave to report to their respective camps immediately. Meanwhile, the government in the release issued this evening states in order to facilitate the recalling of all tri forces personnel who are currently on leave curfew will be imposed island-wide on the 27th of April which is tomorrow. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavin Reserva said that all leave across all ranks of the tri forces have been cancelled. He further states tri force personnel who are on leave have been notified to report to their respective camps immediately. He added special transportation facilities will be provided. Now, Sri Lankan Airlines say that at a time period when the coronavirus is spreading globally, the cost in transporting passengers by air invariably rises. The airline points out that this rise in cost affects flights arranged for special destinations as well. When the overall cost is distributed among a lesser number of passengers, the per head cost increases. Issuing a notice, the airline company says that unlike ordinary flight charges that are based on market changes, individual charges involved in charter flights had to be quoted in this context. Sri Lankan Airlines say that this notice was issued focusing attention of views circulating on social media, alluding that the airline has been charging exorbitant prices when flying back passengers from a few countries. The operational cost involved in landing, parking of aircraft and ground operations could alter when Sri Lankan Airlines flies to destinations it currently does not serve and when there is no service agreement with the respective suppliers. In the present context, other expenditure also involved in the maintenance of aircraft have also increased. Sri Lankan Airlines emphasizes that when taking all such factors into consideration, an increase in the passenger per head cost is inevitable. And that's a wrap of tonight's primetime news. Until we meet again next time, do take care, stay safe and good night. Good night.